Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Thanks for coming. I know it's a long weekend. It's beautiful this weekend. Uh, so thanks for being at church and being a part of just what God is doing here. Now, as we were uh, worshiping, uh, you know, we were singing about God's love. And, and, and kind of what I was just kind of feeling for me was just this deep love that God has for each and every one of us. And I think sometimes those of us who have been in church for a long time, you know, it can almost become tradition where we sing about it. But I want to encourage you this summer, and even today, just recognize and know that God loves you deeply and he loves you so much and he gave his life for you. And I think it's a, it's a truth that we can't forget because it's so, so, so important. But again, I want to welcome you uh, to know, and it's an honor you're here. I'm Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here along with my wife, Beth. And today, uh, Jane and I, we're going camping. And Camping, yeah, camping is something that me that I grew up doing a lot. We had a tent trailer, and like I've shared a few times, we, my dad used to take the summers off, and so we would literally get in our van, pulling our tent trailer, and we'd drive, and we'd go away for the longest, I think it was like a seven-week trip, and we drove through. Uh, we drove all the way one year to Montreal. We drove all the way down through the United States. We even drove through Texas into Mexico one year. Uh, we were in Mexico very long. Uh, because driving in Mexico was crazy, especially pulling a trailer. It was absolutely chaotic. So we ended up coming right back. Uh, but we used to go on these long camping trips. But Jane, she hasn't gone camping too much. It's just something we haven't done as much as an adult, at least me, is camping. But my family does like a yearly uh, camping trip to BC, British Columbia. that we've been doing for like, honestly, probably like 20 years. And the past few years, my family hasn't been able to go. Because as soon as we moved here our drive became three hours longer, right? So for us, from here, it's about an eight-hour drive to get there. We're doing that this afternoon. But as we've been preparing for camping, Jane and I, I've been, you know, we've had a conversation. We've been going shopping, right? And so we go shopping. We went to the store, and we ended up picking up some snacks. And we're getting kind of prepared. But yesterday, as we were preparing, as we were getting ready, uh, I, Beth comes into a room, and she goes, Jane's pretty anxious about camping. And I'm like, why? What's she so nervous about? And Beth's like, well, she's nervous about the darkness. She's nervous about how it's going to be so dark at night, which I think for, especially for a little kid who doesn't really know camping, uh, even as an adult sometimes when you're camping and it's dark, it's like, okay, you know? Uh, and so what we did is we went to the dollar store and we bought, Jane bought herself a flashlight yesterday at the dollar store and it's this red flashlight. I don't know if it's going to last very long. I'm not joking. It might last five minutes. But it's something that for her brings this sense of security knowing that she has uh, uh, a light source. She has a way to light the tent or light her path if she needs to go. She knows where she's going because she can see. Because obviously in the darkness, we, we have a hard time seeing. That's kind of what darkness is. And so today I want to share a message that kind of God has was, was been kind of maybe showing me. Something that's not a new concept by any means. Uh, but I want to talk about the light today. Because... Because light is a theme throughout Scripture where we learn and we hear about us being the light of the world. And since darkness is the absence of light, light will overtake darkness every time. The thing is that we're obviously in a battle uh, between light and dark. And you see this throughout, you know, social media. You see this throughout just even media where there's movies and they're always, you know, the dark against the light or the good versus the bad. But as believers, we're on the side of the light, which means that we will overtake darkness every single time. That when darkness is present as the light of the world, our responsibility is to bring the light into the darkness. That's our call as followers of Jesus is to bring the light. See, I think on Sundays we gather together and we worship and I think our light kind of grows. I think sometimes maybe I, maybe you're the same as me. There's times where I feel like my light is getting a little dim and like I got to put some fuel on the fire to get my light back up. And so the, the reality is we're on the, the winning side of this battle. So I'm going to share a message today called Let There Be Light. See, 
humans have had a unique history with light, but let's go to the beginning when light entered the, the picture, the origin story of light in Genesis chapter one, verse one. It says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said right here, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And then he separated the light from darkness. Before anything existed, God created the heavens and the earth and created light. At the beginning of time, darkness and then light came and God created light. God spoke light into existence with his voice. He spoke light into existence. He spoke the world into motion. And this is the beginning of, of light. This is the beginning of it. But when we look at, you know, several thousand years later, we go to Matthew chapter five and we see another conversation that Jesus is having when it comes to light in the darkness. See, God created, but then we get almost a new mission when it comes to light in Matthew chapter five, verse 14 to 16, a portion of scripture you might know says this, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. See, at the beginning, there was pitch black darkness. But at this point in history, I think what Jesus is telling us, he's saying there's darkness still on this earth. And our responsibility, those of us who carry the light, what are we supposed to do? Let it shine before others and not hide it for ourselves. To let it shine before others. In order to keep the world full of light in the midst of spiritual darkness, God calls you and I to be carriers of the light. To carry it where we go. This mission that Jesus gives here in Matthew 5. Part of it, one of the, well, the greatest message ever spoken in Matthew chapter 5. See, you and I were the light of the world. Those of us who follow Jesus receive this light, a light that pushes out the darkness. And once we receive this light, there's this expectation that we won't hide it or we won't cover it, but we'll actually go into the world, into the darkness and bring the light with us to put the light on a stand for everyone to see. It's not just a flashlight, right, that Jane got to guide our feet. It's something that can light up the entire place. It's not just this little light source. It's the biggest light source in the world coming from God. A light not just for our own safety, but to protect the entire place, to give vision, to give to the ability to see to the entire location. And so what I want to do today is I want to give us three ways that we can let our light shine before others. How do we actually let our light shine? Because obviously, you know, this is something we think about. It's like, how do I show people? How do I let people know about the light? How do I share the gospel? How do I love people? How do I let people know about the light? I want to give us three ways to do this. And then the first way is this, is by how we act. See, how we act matters. How we act, how we act towards our spouses and how we act towards our coworkers or how we act towards our boss or how we act towards our employees, how we act matters. Why? Because people are watching us. In fact, I think reality right now is I think a lot of people are watching us, especially as followers of Jesus, waiting for us to fail and waiting for us to make a mistake. And so what this means is that how we act matters. We let our light shine by acting like Jesus. 
by responding like Jesus, by reflecting his light. See, as followers of Jesus, the closer we are to him, the closer we are to the source, the brighter we will be, the more we will reflect. So you gotta be close to Jesus. See, Jesus' time on earth was lived and spent teaching us how to live, teaching us how to love and teaching us how to care and teaching us how to follow him and teaching us how to be carriers of the light, how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to act. I think if we want to know what it looks like to let our light shine before others, we need to learn to act and live like Jesus did. See, in John 13, verse 14, it says this, and since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. It says, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. This is a beautiful moment where Jesus has washed his disciples' feet. A moment that, you know, was, was this, this responsibility wasn't supposed to be Jesus' responsibility as the teacher, as the rabbi. He was the one who was supposed to have his feet washed. It was a job for a servant. Yet Jesus got the towel out and washed his disciples' feet. A job of someone near the bottom, not someone near the top. See, what Jesus is showing us here is that our title is less important than our responsibility to serve. Our title, you might have the title of father or mother, husband, wife, but it doesn't matter what the title says. It matters what you do with it. See, Jesus had the title of of leader, of teacher, of rabbi, and what did he do? He took the responsibility of a servant, and he says, hey, if you want to let your light shine, if, if you want to know how to live, if you want to know how to love, it's going to mean taking the responsibility of a servant and serving each other rather than standing above people. We help and we push people forward. See, our titles only give us closer access to people. And our job is to be faithful with, the, with what we have and to serve the people that God has entrusted to us. He's entrusted all of us with people. It might be our children. It might be our spouses. It might be our coworkers. It might be our employees. It might be our friends. There's people in our circles. And our way that we show God's love is by serving them. That's how we act we act as a servant. So how do we let our light shine? We follow the lead of Jesus. We learn to live and we reflect that same light. We see how we treat the widows and the orphans and we do the same. We see how he treated them and we see how he treated the Pharisees and the tax collectors and we see how he treated the prostitutes and the rich and we see how he treated the sinners and how he treated the saints and we learn to love and do the same. The way that he loved, we love. The way that he served, we serve. The way that he walked, we walk. Where he goes, we go. We learn how he prayed and we pray the same. We learn how he taught and we learn how he cared and we learn how he spoke. We learn how he rested and we learn how he worked and we do the same. If we wanna let our light shine before others, it matters how we act. Because people are watching. And the number two is this, is by how we speak. How do you speak about people when they're not in the room? How do you speak to people when they're in the room? How do you talk about people when they're not in the room? Because as we know, there's power in what we say. There's power in what we say about each other. There's power in what we say to each other. There's power in our words because our words have the ability to build people or break people. And this comes out in Proverbs chapter 18. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. See, life or death is in the power of our tongue, is the power of our words. We have the ability to lift people up or tear people down. And I know, you know, as a human, there's been moments where I've built people up, but there's also been moments where I've torn people down. 
And when I look back and I reflect on some of the conversations I've had in my life and the things I've said that I wish I didn't say, the things I said to somebody or about somebody, I think, man, like, why did I say that? But there's also moments where I've built people up and, you know, I've had people come to me like, you know, remember that one time, you know, you encouraged me, like, like it helped me. And then I've had people message me like, you remember that one time in high school? It wasn't good. And I'm like, I'm sorry. We have the power to build people or tear people down. See, I think we've all had moments of words that have hurt us deeply and cut us deeply to the core. Even some of us may have had things said to us or about us that we're still dealing with and still causing us issues today. Maybe it's something your parents said about you or your teachers or your spouse or even your kids. Maybe something that someone said about you when you weren't in the room and you found out about it. I think one of the number one reasons why trust is broken in relationship is by finding out that something you told somebody in confidence was shared when you weren't even in the room. See, this breaks us deeply when we talk to someone and we share something and they go and share that personal thing or that personal moment with other people. I think it's the, one of the greatest ways we can break relationship and break trust. Maybe some of the things spoken to us as children that ripped us apart but I think we can also look back. We have moments of things tearing us down, but we all have moments of when someone built us up, someone gave us the courage, someone encouraged us or, or, or built us up to a place where we were strong enough to actually keep on going. I think we all have moments on both sides. We know what it's like. We know the power of the tongue is life or death. Why? Because we've experienced both sides of it. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter four. It says this, don't use foul or abusive language. And let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. You know, as a, you know, a goal for me in my life would be, man, if, what if every single thing I said, everything that came out of my mouth was good and helpful? Now, you know what's helpful sometimes is, is loving correction. You know what's not helpful sometimes is lying to somebody. You know what's helpful sometimes is telling someone the truth, even if it's painful. And not telling them the truth in a way of like, you're an idiot, you know, like don't do that. But there's ways we can love and there's ways that we can correct and there's ways we can be good and helpful in our conversation that'll build people up rather than tear people down. Everything. See, it doesn't say some things. It doesn't say some of the time. It says everything let everything we say be an encouragement. Let us be known for how we speak to and speak about people. That we can honor people and love people with our words. People will see the light. See, people will see Jesus in us when we see how we speak. And I think we have to be careful. Those of us who are married, I know what it's like being married. There's days where you're frustrated. There's days where you're frustrated with your spouse. You're like, I gotta tell somebody about this, all right? I just would encourage you that even if you need help in a moment, never tear your spouse down in private. Build your spouse up and talk positively and good about them even if they're not in the room. Even in your biggest frustration, even in your biggest moment of anger, even in your biggest moment of insecurity, Talk highly about your spouse as well as stand up for them when someone else is talking poorly about them. That's how you build trust. That's how you build strong relationships. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's so important for us to speak highly about our spouses so that everything we say will be good and helpful, building people up, even in correction and discipline, that even when we're disciplining our kids, let everything we say and do be good and helpful. Building people up. Let, let what we say push people forward, not tear people apart. And the last way that we can show our light or share the light is this is by how we respond. 
How do you respond when the darkness comes? When the storm is raging? When fear is high? When insecurity is high? When confidence is low? How do you respond when darkness comes? Because reality is darkness will be there when light vanishes. How do we respond to the darkness? Again, people are watching and our kids are watching how we respond when our car breaks down. Our kids, our people are watching how we respond. I heard a story once of a worship pastor who was on his way to a big conference. He was leading worship and he was running late. And he's on his way there and, and, and someone cuts him off in traffic. So he, he gives them a hand gesture because he's so angry. And then he sees them pull into the church parking lot with him. And he's like, I'm leading worship in front of this guy that I literally responded this way, right? I, I think when, there's something about driving that makes people uh, uh, crazy. Now, I drive a lot. And I see, I've seen some crazy things. I've seen, I've seen people on the road on white mud Someone's trying to pass and this truck is literally swerving to keep them from passing them. Like, I'm not joking. I've seen crazy road rage in my life. But how we respond matters. People are watching us. And not only that, we're watching us. Sometimes we do have a moment where we say or do something. We're like, ooh, that's not good. Again, be quick to apologize. But people are watching. I think as followers of Jesus... People, again, watch us closely. And you know what the reality is? is we're going to mess up. We're going to mess it up. But I think when we mess it up, like I say, be quick to apologize and be quick to forgive. See, a few years ago, we did a series we called The Squeeze. I don't know if you remember this. We did a series called The Squeeze. And the idea was we talked about what should happen when life squeezes us. You know, when you, when, you, when you have an orange and you squeeze it, you get orange juice. So what happens when we're squeezed in life? And the answer comes from these verses in Galatians 5, 22. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. This is what's supposed to come out when we're squeezed, when life comes and the darkness comes and pressure comes. How are we supposed to respond with love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How are we supposed to respond when the darkness comes? How do we let our light shine before others? Is that when we're squeezed, what comes out? Joy. What comes out is love and self-control. And goodness and kindness and patience. And as a parent with two young kids, I'm telling you, you know what squeezes me the most is my children sometimes. But do you know who I love the most? Beth and my children. I love my kids. I love them, but they know how to test my patience, let me tell you. And I love them. And there's times where, where my response is poor. My response to them is poor and, and I have to go apologize. Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I got so upset. When the darkness comes, our response should be this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the truth is, on my own, I'm not going to respond this way. I'm not going to respond to these moments that come up this way naturally. Because human nature, what does it do? It pushes us to anger, to bitterness, to unforgiveness, to fear, to retaliation. But the Holy Spirit produces this fruit inside of us. See, when the darkness comes, the way we repel the darkness is by bringing it in the light how do we respond when 
to the darkness? And how do people see the light inside of us when the darkness shows up? How do we respond to the darkness in our world? Let's be the light of the world. Let's let our light shine before others. Let's let the fruit of the Spirit freely move in our lives. People in our world need the light. People in our world, sometimes all that they need is a smile or someone to hold the door open or to someone sit on the street and have a conversation or for a meal to be cooked and go over and enjoy a meal together. They need the fruit we carry. We need to stop hiding the light and and let it shine before others. You know what's going to happen? There's going to be some pushback. It's going to be pushback when we're showing love and we're doing things that people are like, why are you even doing this? What's the point? And Jesus answered the question, how will people know? How will they know I'm a disciple? How will they know I follow Jesus? How will they know in John 13 verse 34? So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. How will they know? A verse I share so often. How will they know? But how we love. And not just how do we love the people on the streets, but how do we love the people in our own homes? And how do we love the people in our own church? And how do we love the people at work? How do we love people? See, you are the light of the world. We need to believe this. We carry Jesus with us wherever we go. I don't know if you remember this song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. Y'all know that song? It's a beautiful song. And what I love is when I hear Jane singing it in the backseat of our car. I love it. It gets me fired up. Or I'll hear her going, praise the Lord, oh my soul. It's like my favorite thing. But this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. No matter what. No matter if we look at it and we're seeing just a little flicker or we're looking at it and we're seeing a huge fire. The thing about light, especially when it comes to flames, what does it do? It spreads. One time my dad, we used to live on an acreage and he started a fire and he went inside to do something. comes out, my entire neighbor's lawn is on fire. One acre of grass on fire. Fire department showed up quickly, I'm telling you. Fire spreads quickly. And so if you're feeling weak, if you're just seeing a flicker, what's the best way to get stronger? Get around other people who have a bigger flame than you. Get around other people who are shining brighter than you. Get behind people and learn from people who are doing more. Learn from people who are loving well. How do we get better? Get around Jesus and get around other people and start to live our lives the same way they live theirs. Our call is to live our lives like Jesus to let it shine. Your light might seem small. It might seem little, but little is better than zero. I think sometimes Jane's light shines brighter than mine. And she's almost four. I get so caught up and distracted and she just has this view of life that's so beautiful and she notices people. We saw this yesterday. We went out for dinner as a family, which we rarely do we went out for dinner and this lady someone who works there just walks by she's t- all, all these tattoos Jane looks at her and does a double take and she says I love your tattoos that's what Jane said and I'm like I didn't even notice right but Jane has this love and this light and this joy that she brings and I know I can learn from my children on how to be more joyful and how to be a bigger light in the world Sometimes we got to learn from our kids because we're not doing a very good job. It might be a little light, but let it shine. Let it shine by how you speak. and Let it shine by how you act. And let it shine by how you respond. We are the light of the world. You know, our takeaway today is going to come up says this, in our dark world, our responsibility is to bring the light. That's it. 
You see darkness rather than drive by and be like, wow, that sucks. What if we were to bring the light? What if we saw pain and we were able to just go and sit with people and let our light shine before others? Now, I'm not saying it's easy. I get, I get it. It's hard. We all have the excuses and I'm busy, I'm tired. All of them, but I want to encourage you, let's let our light shine. Because I'm telling you, our world needs the light more now than in my lifetime, I think. So much darkness, so much brokenness, so much pain, so much fear. And we have the answer. We have what the world needs. And when we're squeezed, let the fruit of the Spirit pour out. And people will see, not us, but they'll see God inside of us. See Holy Spirit moving and see Jesus working. That he take, took our brokenness and made us whole. He, he took our sin and made us whole and brought us back to connection with the Father. The good news, the greatest news of human history that Jesus came and died instead of me. Let's pray. God, I thank you. God, that in the darkness, you are the light. That you're the light that shines inside of us. That you're the light of the world. And so God, I thank you that you called us to carry that light. And God, it's not a responsibility that we take lightly. God, I pray that you build this courage inside of us and you, and you help us shine bright before others wherever we go. That when we're at work, people will see you. When we're in traffic, God, people will see you. God, when we're at church, we'll see you. When we're with our kids, God, that our kids will see you. When our spouses, God, that people will see you, the light of the world. God, I pray that you build up that courage inside of us to go and be carriers of this light. In Jesus' name, amen.